This is the Rodecaster video that has just been announced by Rode. It brings all of the audio production quality that we've become used to with Rode products such as the Rodecaster Pro 2, the Rodecaster Duo uh, and so on, but now combines that with a full broadcast quality uh, camera switcher, uh, scene switcher and more. Now I'm going to go through all of the specifications of this, show you the features and functionality. I've got one on my desk. I've had one for some time now and have been testing it out. So there it is sitting right in front of me if I don't knock it over. And um, yeah, it really just does pack an amazing amount of power into a really small form factor. Um, I personally think that this is really going to shake up the industry because uh, there are a number of other players in this market at the moment. And I would say the uh, most obvious dominant one, if you are looking for, you know, camera switches uh, in the past would have been the ATEM Mini uh, range of products. Uh, there's a whole uh, slew of them actually, and uh, they've been through quite some uh, evolution over the years as well. But personally, I tried those out in the past when I was starting my channel, uh, and they always just felt really clunky to me. And I've tried lots of other camera switches, hardware switches as well. And they all seem to have this same limitation of if you just want to switch from one camera to another, no problem, press a button and it does it. But when you want to do anything just slightly more adventurous than that, that's when the hardware version just sort of lets things down, because the software that usually accompanies them is just really so clunky and it's so difficult uh, to do the most basic things. Um, so ultimately, when I started my channel, I was looking for a way to create videos in one take with no edits, uh, hence the name, by the way, Take One Tech. Um, I ended up going down the software switching route. Um, this would have certainly solved my problems <laughs> back, that, back uh, three and a half years ago, whenever it was, because it does allow you to do all of the things that I wanted to do with it, which was ease of scene building and ease of switching. So let's get get into uh, exactly what this is and how it works. And first of all, just to give you a bit of an overview, I mean, I've got one on my desk here, but as I say, I do make all of my videos in one take with no edits. So uh, I don't have <laughs> all of this taken apart and I'm not going to assemble it for you uh, as we go through the video. But what I will do is as I just uh, talk through this, um, I just want to show you a bit more of the device and uh, the sort of form factor of it. It is actually really gorgeous as a device. It has the same sort of build quality that we've become used to from Rode. And in fact, feels very similar um, in size and aesthetic, obviously, to the uh, Rodecaster um, Pro Two, I should say, in terms of the sort of size, the width of it is about the same. Uh, it's got all the same sort of form factor going on on the back with connections, but obviously with the addition of all those HDMI sockets. And by the way, just check out all of this connectivity on the back of this device. It's kind of ridiculous what they've managed to get into this device because it isn't just video. It's not just a video switcher. It is a full on roadcaster in a really small form factor. If you want to give it a little bit more context uh, in terms of the size, uh, then think about the Streamer X that was released last year, which, by the way, was their first foray into the world of video uh, here with a single HDMI in and a pass through as well to go out. And then we've got the uh, single Neutrik combo jack in the back there, headphones and headset uh, and so on. Uh, well, if you want to take a look at that and compare it in size, um, it's pretty much the same depth. Actually, the, the Rodecaster video is slightly deeper. If I could actually get this onto the table next to it, uh, so there we go. It's slightly deeper, um, but um, the width of it is about just over two times uh, the width. Um, so that then also makes me think, you know, when I compare the functionality of this, which in itself is a great little device, um, but to get as the amount that they have done into this much larger, uh, it, or sorry, this barely larger form factor is kind of ridiculous. So let's start then by just taking a look at the form factor. And as I say, we'll go through all of the functions and how you actually uh, build things out. And I'll just demonstrate basically the ease with which you can do all of these things uh, that I'm talking about. Uh, so with that said, first of all, let's just take another little look at the form factor. There it is. And I just want to talk about the dimensions. I've, I've given you sort of a visual there. But if you want to just see those in a bit more detail, um, then the dimensions are as follows. It's about five and a quarter inches uh, deep, 12 inches wide, and then about two and a half inches sort of tall at the back at the deepest part. The weight of it, about 1.2 kilos, 2.7 pounds. And the thing that I really love about it is the interface because it has everything that you need for the switching. We'll go over 
what all these uh, buttons do, uh, but it's got everything you need there for the actual production itself. Um, but a lot of the other stuff just sort of gets out of the way when you don't need it. And that's something that I really like about it. And when you compare this again to the ATEM range, just to show you where that sits, um, the Rodecaster video, and we'll go through all the inputs and outputs, but basically you've got up to six video inputs, uh, four over HDMI and then two over USB potentially as well. So you've got six HDMI uh, and, uh, sorry, six video inputs, I should say. Um, and comparing that to the ATEM Mini ISO up at the top there and the uh, ATEM, or ATEM Mini Pro ISO, I should say, uh, up at the top and the ATEM Mini Extreme ISO down at the bottom, uh, one of the things you'll immediately notice is, uh, first of all, the size uh, is, is slightly different for each one, but that mass of buttons on the ATEM Extreme in particular, uh, but even on the other one there up at the top there, the ATEM uh, Mini Pro ISO, there is uh, an awful lot going on in terms of switching. Now, uh, this is something that I think, you know, comes from the uh, the heritage maybe of Black Magic, uh, which who make the uh, the ATEM. Uh, maybe it is partly from their heritage in broadcast. And so there's a lot of broadcast stuff that has come over into it. But as I say, I don't think that's necessarily great um, for us humble consumers <laughs> who are not maybe used to uh, that world. And it just adds a layer of complexity. And as you'll see, when we go through it, um, it certainly is a lot more uh, user friendly to uh, to sort of set up things and work with the Rodecaster video uh, once you have uh, sort of programmed it out as you want. So with that said, that is the sort of interface. So let's just take a look at what we've actually got on here. And obviously, this is just uh, what you can see here. But I'll just sort of highlight these things in this form because it's going to make it easier to just sort of group things together. So first of all, you've got a big button there that is basically the record button. Uh, it's also the streaming button. So this is something that can uh, both record and stream and you've got a couple of indicators there uh, showing you um, the status of those things. Then you've also got these uh, six buttons uh, labeled one to six, and those are the six potential uh, video input sources. So if you're just switching between cameras, uh, those are the buttons that you use to just switch between camera one, two, three, four, and five, and six, and so on. Uh, then above those, oh, sorry, next to that, you have a button which is the fade to black button, so just to fade out. Uh, and then above that row, then you have um, buttons A through G. Now, these are multifunction buttons, and they are either going to be used for scenes. So um, you can switch between different scenes, up to seven different scenes that you can create. And a scene, by the way, is a bit like you're seeing here with me. You'll see me on screen in this format. Um, but then if I was to switch to something else, uh, maybe like this, this could be classed as another scene. Uh, then maybe there's another one that has a different view. For example, if I wanted to uh, show you Road Central app, for example, uh, you could say that this is another scene. So that's what we're talking about uh, when we are talking about scenes. Are those different sort of views and I'll show you how easy it is to create those in the Rode Central uh, app to control the Rodecaster video uh, in a moment as well. So those buttons then are for scenes, but you can also use them to trigger uh, audio sound effects. So in the same way that on the Rodecaster, we have the smart pads. So here is my Rodecaster Pro 2. We've got these smart pads down at the side uh, and we can use those for triggering audio. Well, that is the same with these as well. You can use these buttons to trigger audio. Uh, and then the final thing that they can be used for is for uh, toggling on overlays. So those could be things like a lower third, maybe with your name, with your logo, things like that. Now, the way that you sort of switch between those different functions, bearing in mind that they're effectively uh, for three different purposes, either your scenes, your overlays, or your sound effects, um, well, that's where these buttons over here come in. And so you've got uh, two buttons up at the top. Uh, one of them is going to be for your different media, uh, so to play media. Um, and then the second one is going to be for your overlays. Down at the bottom, uh, you've got two further buttons. Uh, one of them is to toggle on green screen, and I will talk about that uh, probably in a separate video in terms of how to get the best results with green screen with the Rodecaster video, because uh, again, coming back to this one take thing, <laughs> so I don't wanna be putting up and down my green screen, so I'll do that in a separate video, uh, but it has got some really great green screen ability in there, so that bottom button is for toggling that on and off. Um, and then the second from the bottom is a way that you can actually create scenes 
um, rather than using the scene builder, which we'll look at, which is in the uh, Rode Central app, uh, you can also build some level of scenes out actually on the device itself. So next to that, and I'm just whizzing through the buttons to show you what they all do, but uh, we'll go into more depth in the actual functionality uh, in due course as well. Uh, then you've got this screen here. This is a touch screen and the display on this changes depending on uh, what you're doing and we'll see how that works. You've then got a rotary encoder, uh, which is going to feel really familiar to you. Uh, certainly, if you've seen the Stream X, it basically looks to me like exactly the same uh, rotary encoder. So it's something that you can push in and out. You can turn it uh, and it's got an illuminated ring around it as well, which is used to give you some feedback. Uh, next to that, you've got another uh, encoder, which is for the volume in the headphones. So there's two sets of headphones and then also a uh, monitor out as well. So that was is for controlling that. Uh, and then finally, down here, we've got three further buttons. Uh, the top one is a really useful button. And this is a really thoughtful idea <laughs> that uh, with the uh, coming back to the I'm, I'm always going to compare it to the ATEM, by the way. But the thing about the ATEM is sometimes not understanding necessarily what things are doing. Uh, well, this is a, um, uh, a button that basically is like an inspect button. So if I show you what happens when you press this button, you basically touch any other button button and it will tell you on here um, what that button is doing. So it's a really useful way to sort of figure out uh, how things are working in terms of settings uh, and all of those sorts of things. So um, uh, that is uh, the, the top button there. Uh, then you've got these two, which are related to how you are sort of switching between uh, different um, cameras, but we'll take a look at that uh, in uh, a moment uh, and separately. So with that said, those are the sort of functions that you've got there on the front. As I say, there's going to be a lot more in-depth into the workings of those. But let's just take a look at all of these outputs, because as I say, it is really quite phenomenal what we've got in here. And so let's just take a look at that and break it down a bit. So first of all, we've got these uh, six HDMI um connectors and they are all obviously uh, directly related to uh, video and so first of all you've got some video inputs uh, HDMI 1 to 4 as they are labeled on the back there and those are basically four HDMI inputs that can accept up to uh, 1920 by 1080 um, so this is uh, 1920 by 1080 not 4k uh, in the same way that the ATEMs are and uh, in, in the ATEMs, I believe, are 1920 by 1080 as well, I mean by that. Um, so just note that. Uh, but you've got four inputs of those, and that could also be used for a computer input. So if you want to set up some scenes where you're maybe sharing your screen and bringing a, uh, a camera in, obviously, I make tutorials. So those are kind of, kind of ob my obvious first <laughs> thoughts with this, uh, but it can take any, uh, any inputs you've got there. Uh, and then you've also got an A and B HDMI socket, and those are both outputs. Now, those can either output put the program feed, which is basically, you know, the feed that's going out into the recording into the live stream. Uh, so you can have that going out to a separate monitor to be able to see that. Uh, an example of that might be if you're using a teleprompter. So I have a teleprompter that I don't actually use for teleprompting, but it's in front of me here. And so when I'm looking into the camera, I'm actually seeing the uh, the output so that I can make sure that, uh, you know, what I'm seeing is what is going out. So that could be a potential use for that, or maybe just to actually monitor this uh, somewhere as well, of course. But what you can also have going out of there is um, also a preview. Now, what preview is, is where you have um, multiple different cameras set up um, and you are maybe have one going out into the, uh, the, the, the feed, um, but then you've basically queued up another one. And so the way that that works, uh, we'll take a look at a little bit later, but that gives you the ability to see, uh, you know, which shot basically is queued up to go live uh, next. So we'll take a look at that uh, in due course. The other thing then you can have is um, what's called the um, multi-view output. Um, and that is essentially just a view of um, everything on the roadcaster and basically it looks like this we'll take a look at this in more detail but this gives you an overview of all the different uh, things that you've got set up it gives you the preview the live view and then also what's assigned to all of the different channels but getting it slightly ahead here we'll take a look at this a little bit later so that is the hdmi sockets covered uh, let's move on then to the audio section now, you could consider that this basically has a 
Roadcaster Duo inside it, except it's actually more than that. Um, because I say that because the Roadcaster Duo has, uh, in the same way that this does, it has the two Neutrik combo jacks, which basically accept either XLR or a quarter inch uh, input. So that would be XLR, the sort that you would have in a microphone typically. Um, and then the quarter inch might be something for an instrument or maybe a stereo pair even can go into those uh, and you can sort of split them uh, into those two sockets and, and combine them to become a stereo pair. So those those uh, are exactly the same as we have on the Rocaster Pro 2 and on the Rocaster Duo, the Duo obviously having two of them. Uh, what we also have then is we've also got two quarter inch headphone outputs as well, just like we have on the Rocaster Duo as well. Uh, and then we have the left and right uh, quarter inch for a uh, stereo out for speakers. Um, so this is very similar to the Rocaster Duo. And I say it's like we've got a Duo packed into this, um, but it's actually slightly more. And that's because um, we do also, as we'll see in a moment, we do also have wireless in here as well that allows you to connect to wireless microphones. And you might think, well, we can do that with the Rocaster the duo. Uh, the difference is when you connect a wireless microphone in the duo, it actually takes the place of one of those combo jacks. And so you can't have two microphones hardwired in and also two wireless devices. Uh, whereas with this, uh, you actually can. So as I say, it is giving you even more uh, connectivity than you have in the uh, in the duo in its current form. So next up then, we've got a bank of, of USB sockets. And so these are going to seem somewhat familiar if you are familiar with Rocaster Pro 2 and the Duo again. Uh, you've got the first channel, USB 1, and in the same way as on the Duo and on the uh, Rocaster Pro 2, um, the USB 1 channel actually gives you two audio channels. One of them is going to show up on your computer as Roadcaster Video Main, and the other one is going to show up as Roadcaster Video Chat. That's really useful to have two separate audio channels going in and out of your computer, and these are inputs and outputs, because it means that you can have one feed going into one application, one going into another, uh, and then also have routing between those two applications going through the Roadcaster uh, video in this case. Now, what you also have on this USB 1 channel uh, or cable, I should say, is also the Rodecaster video feed. And that's basically the program feed, but it's going into your computer. So let's say you were going to be using this as a camera switcher feeding into Zoom, for example, to just take your meetings to another level. Well, then you would just simply select in Zoom your Rodecaster video um, as the camera input and then all of the switching that you're doing on the Rocaster video would then be feeding into uh, Zoom, Teams, or whatever application you are using. Now then, we have the next socket, which is the USB 2. Uh, once again, similar to the Rocaster video, um, Pro 2 and the Rocaster Duo, this has a secondary audio channel. So it shows up on your computer as Rodecaster Video Secondary. Uh, and this is basically just a third uh, channel. So we've got the main, we've got the chat, and we've got the secondary. Now you can connect these both to the same computer to give you three separate audio channels. Uh, that's actually what I do with the Rodecaster Pro 2. So I have two cables from here going into my computer. It gives me three channels. I use one for my, uh, actually my live production software that I use on the computer, which is Ecamm Live. Uh, that's on a dedicated channel. I have another dedicated channel then for uh, system audio and another dedicated channel for Zoom. Or if I'm doing a live event, I might have two separate Zoom things going and be able to route audio between them by splitting those out. So uh, that is the way that I actually use the two channels, um, the, or sorry, I should say the two connections, two cables, USB 1 and 2. Um, but you can also um, have those connected to two separate computers and then be feeding audio from one computer into the other uh, and vice versa. So lots of options then uh, with there, uh, with those, uh, those multiple channels. Uh, what you also have on the USB 2 uh, connection is the control via Road Central. So whereas on the Rocaster Pro 2 and the Rocaster Duo, um, it, it is just that USB 1 channel that is the, the main one that we use for setting up with Rocaster, uh, with Road Central. Uh, just note that in here, I guess because of the bandwidth requirements for the uh, for the video and the audio, uh, they've actually split off that Road Central control onto that secondary channel. So just note that that's where the uh, control via Road Central is going. So if you, you that's on your main computer, uh, then you need to the Rodecaster Video 2 cable plugged into that computer as well. 
Now, next up then, we've got a third USB, and that is USB 3, and that is just for USB storage. Obviously, this is a video device. You're going to be recording uh, potentially onto the device. You don't have to. You can record, obviously, feeding into your computer and record on there, but the whole point is that you can record on the device, and obviously, that could lead to some rather large uh, files being created, and so you can use something like an external uh, flash drive or something like that, um, hard uh, <laughs> SSD, I should say, um, and have that plugged into the USB socket on the back there. And obviously any kind of external. Uh, FAT32 is the uh, the formatting that is required for that. Um, but then, uh, yeah, you can plug that into that USB 3 and that's going to give uh, that access to all of that storage. You've then got two further USB channels, USB 4 and 5, uh, I should say sockets rather than channels. Uh, and these are <laughs> are used for, um, first of all, webcams. So if you want to have more than four cameras and you've got four HDMI sockets taken up there, um, you can just use a USB camera into uh, those sockets. But if you have got another HDMI camera, you can also just use a capture card. So a capture card would be something like uh, the Elgato Camlink. I guess you could also potentially, uh, let me think, maybe run it through the uh, the Rodecaster uh, Streamer X as well, the Rode Streamer X. I'll have to just check on that. I'm not quite sure. But basically, a capture card can also feed into, uh, into those USB 4 and 5s to give you those extra uh, camera inputs. It can also be used for uh, USB mics as well. So I've already mentioned that we've basically got those two combo jacks, um, either XLR or the uh, quarter inch. Um, we've also got the wireless, as we'll see in a moment, but you can also plug in up to two um, USB mics, although they do need to be of the, uh, the Rode range rather than just any old mic. It does need to be a Rode wireless uh, USB mic. The other thing, though, that you can plug into this, because I have obviously mentioned that, you know, this device has basically got uh, something, you know, more than a uh, Rodecaster Duo packed into the form factor. But one obvious thing that is missing is the large faders. Now, um, I'd, I'd, when I first heard that this was being created, and we had some uh, conversations sometime last year about it, in fact, um, one of the things that I thought at the time was, you know, are we going to miss our faders? Because, you know, <laughs> <laughs> they are kind of like a big dominant part of the uh, the device and it is something that is uh, you know obviously there to be able to uh, mix things up a little bit um but what i have subsequently realized you know since um since thinking about this more is that actually I'm not doing a whole lot of adjustment on these. I'm pretty much using this for all of the effects and things like that and getting things dialed in. And once I've got everything set up, um, then I don't tend to do a whole lot of, you know, sort of live mixing of different things. But maybe that's just because of the environment I'm in. I'm in a pretty much, you know, well-controlled studio space and uh, Billy No Mates here doesn't have anyone else in the studio with me. So <laughs> I just have everything set up the way that I want it. However, um, it may well be that you do still want all of that power of the roadcaster with those physical faders and or maybe even just to bring in even more audio sources. Well, in that case, um, what you can also use those two um, extra USB sockets for is you can just plug a roadcaster directly into it. So yes, these devices do work together. You simply just connect up the roadcaster Pro 2 or the roadcaster Duo uh, into the back in one of those two USB sockets. And then you have got all of that additional uh, functionality of those faders in particular of the roadcaster Pro 2 going into the uh, roadcaster uh, Duo, uh, roadcaster video uh, as well. So those are the USB connections. Moving on, <laughs> we've got some more connections to cover, uh, and these are the other connections. I've loosely con uh, grouped these together into the uh, other category. Uh, so first of all, we've got power. This is all going to be familiar as well if you're used to the Rodecaster Pro 2 and Rodecaster Duo. Exactly the same setup. So we've got that power socket there uh, with the same power button. We've also got an Ethernet uh, that can be used to connect to the network and also for streaming. So it can stream wirelessly or over the uh, network, bearing in mind that this is an all-in-one solution. You don't need it to be connected to a computer. So having an Ethernet for streaming purposes. It's also used for updates and things like that as well. Then we've got the micro SD uh, just there above the uh, Ethernet connection, in fact. So you can store things on there. Um, so if you're not wanting to connect some sort of external drive, if you're not recording to the device, perhaps, or you just want to use that for some other things, uh, some small assets or whatever, uh, then you can store those on there as well. 
Next, uh, you've got the wireless um, uh, antennas, which are at the back there, and there's two of them. Now, I've marked it down as two inputs. It's not technically uh, two, think, two inputs, but it does allow you to connect two wireless mics there. Uh, and again, you can use that for over-the-air updates and things like that. And finally, it does also have Bluetooth, so you can connect that to a mobile phone uh, for uh, taking uh, incoming uh, calls and things like that. Um, I mean, it's uh, it's a bit overkill for a Bluetooth headset, but it does actually function in that way. So I know people who have shows where they do st have still have uh, traditional call-ins, um, and it allows you to connect to the uh, to the phone in that way. Um, so those are all of the inputs and outputs. And as I say, it's really quite uh, quite phenomenal uh, in terms of what they've uh, what they've packed into there. So let's just actually go in then and take a look at how we actually put all of these things to use and take a little bit more of a look at the interface because we've seen the inputs and outputs. Uh, we've seen what the device looks like itself um, and we've got the, the screen there and we can control all of that. Uh, but really the power of this comes when you look at how easy it is to actually just program this and get this doing the things that we want it to do. So first of all, in the very basic form, we've got the different uh, scenes there. So if I just go to this view, which is basically just the output now from the Rodecaster um, and I can just press this button here uh, and if I just press this one, it's going to cut to it. Press this button, it will cut to the next view here. Pressing this button, and I will just cut across again. Uh, and so we're just there basically switching between those three cameras. By the way, uh, you may notice <laughs> that Rode have also uh, brought out a range of HDMI cables in the same vibrant colors as they've got with all of their XLR cables and things like that. Um, they don't come with the uh, Rodecaster itself, so they are sold separately, but nevertheless, uh, it's nice to have those colors. As you can see, I went with uh, Tombuck Blue, uh, Doc Rock Purple, and uh, Ecamm Orange. <laughs> those are the ones that I chose. Uh, but anyway, let's take a look then at Rode Central, uh, because that's where we can do the, uh, the programming of this. And so in Road Central, you will see that it looks uh, very similar to uh, to what you may be used to before. In fact, if I just move this somewhere where you can actually see it, uh, I think it's because, hang on a second. Uh, that's why <laughs> I'm in the wrong scene. Uh, that one, that one's better. It's all nicely framed up in this one. Um, so first of all, then uh, if we've got... Uh, in Rode Central, we've got the uh, the Rodecaster Pro 2 and the Rodecaster Video Connected, so this should all be familiar. And when you go into that, you're going to see these different uh, little menus that you can go into. Now, whereas when you go into uh, the Rodecaster, for example, in Rode Central, it all happens within here. Um, these two here, the Scene Builder and the Audio Mixer, are basically going to pop out a new window. And so what you're going to see then is we've also then got, if I click on that, it basically pops out this window for the audio. And then we've got this one here for the video. Uh, before we go into those, though, um, I will just go through the uh, different settings that we've got in here. So first of all, you've got device configuration. So I'll just talk through some of these a little bit. Um, we've got that HDMI output, and I mentioned that there's those two HDMI outs, and those can be used for either the preview, the program, or the multi-view. Uh, the multi-view is this view here that you can see. Not this one, <laughs> it's this one. Uh, and this basically shows you um, what you've got uh, going on on the Rodecaster at the moment. And so essentially what that is, is it's a kind of view of the Rodecaster. And so this here is the bank of camera buttons. So these buttons here, uh, sorry, these previews here directly relate to those six buttons that you've got. So this is camera one relates to this button because I've got the top down view up here. I will just show you. These are basically relating to all of these buttons. So uh, the, the sort of view that you get in here is uh, sort of synced up with um, what you've got on the, uh, on the device itself. Then you've got all of the audio interface down here. That's showing you the uh, the levels that you've got. Uh, then you've got these buttons here, which are currently empty. We'll take a look at building those out in a moment. But those obviously relate to this bank of buttons on the top and are things like your scenes and so on. And then you've got other information there, like the recording, streaming, and uh, and so on. Um, so that is the um, uh, the multi view view. So we'll come to that in uh, in a moment. Let's just go back over to here, to Road Central. 
Uh, we've got some options here for frame rate, so you can choose your frame frame rate. Uh, we've got this switching option, and this is the uh, two options you've got there is either having it instant, which means basically when you press a button, it just automatically switches scene, um, or studio is where basically you queue up the next scene, and then it will switch to that uh, when you press uh, the cut button. Um, so I'll talk about that in, in a moment. And then you've got recording. It does do isolated recording, and that is isolated recording of up to your um, uh, six video sources. So you can record up to six video sources and obviously the actual primary output as well. And that will also record isolated audio from all of your um, audio inputs and that you can have up to nine of those as well. So similar to the Rodecaster Pro 2 has got nine sort of virtual uh, faders there um, uh, on the Rodecaster video. So just nine channels like we've got on the Rodecaster Pro 2. Next is the audio section. This is all similar to we've got on the Rodecaster as well. So headphones, choosing the sort of type of headphones you've got, uh, the monitor output. So that is that speaker output and whether you want that at fixed output level or whether it should be basically whatever the, uh, the mix is, you can turn that up and down. You've also got multi-track. Um, so if you want to send out a... Uh, multi-track over USB or record in multi-track. And what that does is um, either it's just going to have everything recorded down to a single uh, audio track, um, or if you've got multi-track on, then you've got two options, either it's post-fader or pre-fader. So pre-fader being basically before you have made any adjustments. So basically the unfiltered audio coming in and post-fader is after uh, those audio uh, changes have been uh, applied. And then you've got HDMI output, and that is, uh, again, for audio specifically, uh, and that is, do you want the audio to be passed out over that HDMI cable um, as well? And should that be the live mix or off? Uh, and next, you've got the display, brightness, and some system stuff here related to network, date and time, and all of that kind of thing. So those are uh, actually really the boring stuff, the device configuration. Uh, but let's go and take a look at the scene builder next, uh, because this is where it gets really interesting. Uh, because, as I say, we've got this sort of popped out interface. Get to the right scene, Alec. There we go. Uh, and let's just switch over to, uh, to this scene here. Down at the bottom then, we've got these buttons and these directly relate to what you see on the Rodecaster. If I just go back to that top down shot, obviously you can see here that we've got uh, these six buttons down here and those all directly relate to the six buttons that are on the device down there. And then these buttons here are again relating to these buttons that we've got up there. So you're basically just pro programming on the device um, using these buttons. Um, over on the left-hand side, you've got a media library here. So this is where you're going to upload things like audio, uh, video, um, images for lower thirds, graphics and things like that. And then basically over on the other side then, uh, you've got where you are going to make any changes. So uh, this is a library over on this side. Over on the right hand side is where you're going to edit the things and then down at the bottom is basically uh, the things that you want to edit. So for example, here we've got these three buttons and as I click on them, you see it's changing my camera. And if I want to change this to be a different camera, for example, I'm just going to come over to the right side, which is where we edit things and just say that this maybe it's going to be camera two. So now that is camera two. Now what you can also do in here, and as I say, I won't go into too much detail of this uh, for this particular video, but in each of these cameras, you have the option then to change the uh, chroma key. So that is if you are using green screen, then there are some controls in here where first of all, whether it is a green or blue, obviously it's going to do some weird things with my background because I've got blue and green in that. Um, and then you can change, uh, turn the advanced settings on and go in and make some changes there. So I'll do a separate video all about green screen and how to get the best results out of it specifically uh, with the roadcaster video but that is where you would do that um, but those are just cameras and that's how you sort of change uh, what cameras are selected on these different buttons but what is really interesting about this and what sets it apart from the ATEM once again and these other uh, hardware switches that there are available is this scene builder here now each of these buttons here um, A through G is something that can be uh, uh, used to build out a scene and you've got two different things you can either use one of these templates or you can go through to this custom now if I click on templates what you'll see is 
it's going to present us with a few different options. I'll just move this window over a little bit. And the layout here, we've got a few options. So first of all, uh, PIP, picture in picture, uh, that would be where you've got one main screen um, and then a small little window down in one of the corners or up in the corner. Um, you've got this layout, which is basically uh, side by side, or and you've got a row of different uh, uh, camera layouts here. Uh, so either two next to each other, um, two in uh, sort of landscape format, more vertical format, three uh, or two by two here for cameras. Uh, then you've got this one here, which is, as you can see, a few different arrangements there of a large next to a small. So that would be maybe for either two people speaking, uh, where one is the uh, speaker and someone else next to them, or maybe for a screen share or something like that. And then you've got these different layouts here. So these are all basically pre-configured layouts. So if I was to use one of these, in fact, let's just take this one as uh, an example. We've now just created this scene, which has got these four different things uh, in these four different quadrants. And down below, you can see here, we've got basically the background image. Uh, we've got camera A, camera B, camera C, camera D, or position A, B, C, and D in the scene, I should say. And all we need to do to assign those things is um, we can assign a background. Now, uh, I've added some graphics in here. So I've got actually a sort of animated video background. And you simply to add media to here, click on the add media, it's going to bring up the browser window, you pick out whatever uh, video file, audio file, um, or image that you want. Um, so here is just an animated background. If I just drop that into here, um, that has now dropped that into the background of the scene. Um, and then you've got camera A, so I can just go and choose input and it's just sort of off the edge of your screen. Sorry about that. There we go. Inputs. Uh, so we can just select camera one. That's just brought in camera one, simple as that. Uh, camera two, camera three, and I've only connected three cameras, but never mind. Let me just put <laughs> me back again in this corner. But if I had four cameras, I could easily just add those in. Um, and so now we've just quickly created a scene that's got one of these stock layouts here with four different uh, cameras. And then we can also do things like apply a border. Uh, I've had a color here as well. So if I want a white border on those, uh, change the size and so on. And now we've just created that scene. And if I actually just go to this as an output, let me go to this now. Now, and what I'm going to do is uh, I will just show you the output. Uh, this is the live output now from the Rocaster video um, where we've just created this scene in uh, very little time at all. We've got an animated video background that's going on in the background there to give it some movement. Uh, and uh, we've got our four cameras coming in. So really as simple as that. And to get something up and running so quickly is uh, is the thing that really, for me, sets this apart from, uh, from other devices. Uh, let's go back though, and let's do a little bit more of that because um, there are some other things that we can do here as well. Obviously that one there, I just basically used a stock layout, but what this allows us to do, and just to show you the versatility here, is if I go through to uh, this camera, uh, sorry, this, uh, placeholder B, use the right terminology, uh, scene B. <laughs> um, and now instead of using one of the templates, let me just click on custom. And here you've got full uh, control of exactly what you want to add in. So at the moment, it's just got one camera. So if I click on that, I can add in more, I can uh, click into this camera uh, area here. And just as before, choose camera A, sorry, camera one. Um, but what makes this different is to the ATEM in particular is you still have the fine control of setting things up with coordinates, um, but you also are just simply able to drag things about. And it's this sort of drag and drop. Uh, you can also crop things in. So if I want to just crop in this edge here, crop in this edge over here as well. Uh, just like that, um, then we can easily create a scene uh, just by dragging and dropping. Now, if you are coming from the world of uh, software switches, um, which is, you know, what I use, I use Ecamm Live a lot uh, for these kind of things, uh, then this is going to seem, you know, well, this is, you know, this is what we do anyway in software switches, but I can tell you in hardware switches, um, it's nowhere near this straightforward <laughs> ordinarily. Uh, it's, uh, it's so this is really sort of a breath, a breath of fresh air from that point of view. And then we can just come in here and add in another camera. So let's say we want our top down shot. Maybe we want to position this up over here. Let's make that one a little bit smaller. Uh, move this one around. And the fact that you can easily just sort of move these things on the screen is, um, 
is yeah is the, is the thing that really sets this apart uh, then you can click on apply borders and we can add a border to that and we could also if we add another layer in and we can just easily drag these and drop them so if we want them above uh, a layer or below we can sort of reorder those things like that uh, and then i could just add in my media in here as well and just drag and drop that uh, same thing that we had before uh, and now we've got that animated background going on in this scene as well and so if I go back to uh, this one here you can see the output so now we've then got this scene with the animated background I can also switch back to my other scene so cut to that one uh, and you'll notice also that the video is just actually looping in the background so that uh, scene that I've got going on with the background there is just continuously looping because it's one of the video assets that, uh, that I've got there and it's just nicely uh, looping in the background. So I've been able to create with the Roadcaster video something that I would just never have bothered uh, attempting <laughs> with the uh, Roadcaster, uh, sorry, with the let me get my terminology straight with the ATEM um, in such a short time. So it's this that really is the uh, the game changer, I think, uh, for the Rocaster video as a video switcher. Let's take a look, though, at some more things that you can do in the uh, Rodecaster, uh, Road Central video uh, control. Um, so I mentioned that this these buttons here can be used for scene switching. So now we've basically got a selection of uh, cameras and also a selection of scenes. And as I say, you can have up to seven of those. But this button here basically changes these buttons, uh, changes the function into uh, being for media instead. So clicking on that, you'll notice that that has now illuminated purple. And by the way, it has also illuminated purple on the device itself. And now all of these buttons that previously we had, obviously the scenes were illuminated. So so when I disengage that button, here we've got scenes uh, A and B. Uh, well, if I press that, those are all now blank, and that's because we have not yet programmed them. So let's see how we do that. Well, over here, we now have these uh, different buttons, and this is for adding in our media. And here you can see I've got an audio track. By the way, um, the things that you've got here in your media library, uh, you can just filter those by just videos, graphics, or sounds. Um, so if I go into this section and just show which ones you uh, want in here, as uh, so if I just show just the sounds, if I want to assign that to one of these buttons here, just click on the button and then as you can see, drag and drop from the library. So all I'm going to do here, if I just disable else on my computer for a second uh drag this audio on here i didn't want the audio to sort of bleed through um now we've got this audio file um assigned to this button um by the way uh this track happens to be called uh es underscore malfunction <laughs> that's the name of the track it's not a warning <laughs> anyway uh so that's a bit of a bad name of a track to use for a demo isn't it but anyway uh the es malfunction track um i have just assigned that to uh, this particular button so if i was to press the button it would start playing that track. Uh, what we've also got then is you've got some controls here. As you can see, you can set the start or end position. So if you've got a full track, but you just want to play a part of it, um, then you can do that in here by adjusting these numbers. But you can also do this by uh, dragging these little uh, icons here at the bottom of the playhead uh, and you've got this one at this end so as you can see what that's doing is it's trimming the start and end point but what you can also do is adjust the fade uh, you can either adjust the fade from this point here um, or you can just do it again with the uh, little icons here uh, little handles if you like to drag and drop the uh, thing there or drag the start and end point I should say um, so now you can see we've set a different start and end position for the track and also a different sort of fade in and fade out uh, point as well uh, then you've got the playback mode so uh, this is basically the behavior of the audio based on when you press the button so the first one here is when you press the button what do you want to happen do you want it to toggle on and off the music so press to start press to stop the other option would be if you press and hold it it's going to play the sound for the duration that you are holding the button down or the other option is one shot which is basically every time you press the button it's going to start it back from the beginning so uh think air horn sound effect that people seem so keen on these days uh, <laughs> uh that's the one that they're using to just press it multiple times and it's going to start from the beginning each sound Next then is uh, loop. So you've got loop off or loop on. If you want it to play, maybe you've got a continuous bed of music that you want to play continuously in the background of your production. Uh, then you could have it looping on or looping off. Some of these will change. 
<coughs> excuse me, depending on uh, what uh, setting you have here. Um, but this one here, if we go back to toggle, um, then you can also say what to, you want to happen when you toggle it on and off. So you press the button to start the music, press to stop. Um, do you want it to continue where it left off? Um, or replay from the beginning. Um, so maybe you're playing an audio excerpt and you want to play it and listen to it and talk over it and uh, pick up where you left off, um, or you want it to start from the beginning each time. You've got those options in there. Um, you can also reassign. So if you want to change uh, the position of this as well, you can click on that. By the way, you can do that with those other functions as well. Uh, so if I want to move this, for example, to this position, uh, then we can do that. Uh, click in here, uh, reassign, and we can move it to some other position. So if you want to reorganize things, uh, that is how you would do that. Now, uh, because we now have something assigned to this button, you'll see that on the device itself, uh, we've got that uh, is now illuminated. And once again, if I press this button to uh, go back to our regular scenes, now this is showing the scenes and it's also showing which one is active and which one is, uh, is coming up next. So coming back over then, let's take a look at the other thing that we can add in very easily in here as well. And that is this icon, which is for the um, uh, overlays. So overlays are, as you would expect, things that are going to be laid over the top of your production. Uh, and so that would be things like lower thirds. And so I've got one just here. So if I go into this uh, and select overlays, uh, and I'll just go and program this here and drag and drop this one, which is kind of like a name tag type thing, uh, name lower third. And if I just show this now, press the button to toggle it on, uh, you can see how there it is. It's appearing there on the screen. Uh, it's just centered it. That is the size of it. And it's just put it right in the center. Um, but we can click in here to adjust. And then just in the same way that we can adjust the position of our video feed and things like that. Uh, so we can do exactly the same with this. And we can position that exactly where we want it on the screen. We can uh, resize it as well if we want make it a bit smaller. Uh, and now that is going to be activated whenever we press that button B. So just to show you what that would look like, if I come back to this, uh, now you can see we've got that overlay there. And if I just press this button, you can see in the bottom left hand corner of the screen, uh, if I press the button, it will toggle it on and toggle it off. I just put another one on there, which is that my logo up in the top corner as well. Uh, so you can see how those work and you could have like a whole bank of those uh, sort of queued up uh, and toggle on and off as you uh, as you want. Uh, and once again, that sort of green button sorry, blue button, I should say down here is going to illuminate to show you that uh, these are now the overlays we're looking at. Toggle that off, click back here. Now it's going to show you the uh, media files that we've got. And if neither of those two are illuminated there, um, then basically those are going to be our scenes. And as we switch scenes and cut back and forth, it's going to cut back and forth to those, uh, those different scenes for us. So uh, that is how uh, really, I think, straightforward it is uh, to use the scene builder on uh, on in, within Road Central to actually program this. So just coming back to there for a second, uh, let's take another look. There is also then uh, these buttons down here. Uh, and this is basically you can actually control it with this as well. So obviously, you've seen how I've been doing that. As I'm pressing these things, it is actually having a direct effect on the output. Um, and so these will also do the uh, the, to do the same thing there as well. Uh, now what you also have on each scene is the um, the type of transition basically. So at the moment, if you press cut, it is just going to switch between those two that we've got selected. And just to show you what that looks like in the uh, uh, the multi view. Uh, so here is what you see. Uh, you can see that those scenes that we created um, have now appeared in here. So we've got a preview of those. And you can imagine that if you've got, you know, six cameras connected and you've got seven scenes, you'd have a very clear view of all of that. Um, and what I was talking about with the program view and the preview is basically this view here um, that you're seeing is that's effectively what's going out. That's the sort of live view. Uh, and this one here is what is queued up. So the way that that works is as I press buttons on the uh, roadcaster, I'm basically changing the preview. So that is changing between those different views that uh, we've created, either the uh, the scenes or the cameras. Uh, and then it's only when I press the cut button or the auto button uh, on the roadcaster that it is going to actually make that transition from one to the other. So if I press the cut button now, you'll see it just sw swaps those around. Now this one is the live one. And that previous scene that we're in is now uh, back into the preview. And as I change 
again, it's going to switch those scenes up. Uh, and so then once again, press cut and it will make that one the live view. Uh, so that's how that works. Uh, that was that option that I talked about, though, where you do have the option of rather than have it um, having to press that second button, uh, this is something that comes over from broadcast. Uh, but you do have the option of uh, if we go back to uh, Road Central, you do have the option of changing that to be instant. Now, if you change that to be instant, uh, then what happens is in the multi view, uh, what you see then is you just see a single view because that's basically means whatever button you press, whatever uh, camera angle or whatever scene uh, you select, it's just going to switch to that automatically. If you are in that studio mode though, so let's just put it back into that, uh, the other option that you have rather than um, just a direct cut is you do have this option to auto fade um, between a, or have some sort of transition, I should say, uh, between the uh, two different views. And that's this button here, this auto. And the way that you can set that is coming back over to video uh, is here. These are these different transitions. So you've got fade. They're just dropping off the bottom of your screen. Uh, you've got fade, uh, dip, uh, dip to black, um, or you've got wipe, which is different directions. So if I was to put this wipe on like that uh, and then hit auto, uh, you would see that the transition, if I switch to a different scene, uh, you would see that there would be a transition like this. What I need to do is put it so that you can see it. Let's try that again, shall we? <laughs> uh, so you can see that it's got this wipe. Now, personally, I don't like any of these effects. I think that, uh, you know, I prefer either just a simple fade or a simple cut. So I don't personally use any of those, but they are the same sorts of transitions that you see in uh, in ATEM and all of these other things as well. So you can have those if you prefer. Um, personally, for me, the way that I would use this um, is I wouldn't even actually use the cut one to sort of queue up something. Uh, again, that's something that comes over from broadcast. Uh, but for me, I'm much more likely to have it just the simple um, press the button and it changes the scene. That's the way that I use my software switcher as well. There is actually, though, another way that you can have it switch cameras. Uh, and this is a really useful thing, which is that you can have it where the um, camera is going to switch based on who is talking, because obviously you are potentially uh, going to be in a situation where you've maybe got four cameras, four different guests. If you're recording a video podcast or an event or something like that, you can have it so that the video follows the audio. And the way that you set that up is back over in Road Central. I've got so many windows, <laughs> so many things to show you with uh, Rode that uh, I've got to keep track of my scenes. Uh, if we go back out of here, um, this is this one here. So we're in Rode Central and it's this auto switching. Now, the way that this works is, as it says, you can link a camera to particular camera angles and then it's going to do that switching for you automatically. So if I go to the next here and then uh, we go into this, let me just sort out something here. There we go. Um, we can just click get started. Uh, basically, this now shows you, again, this representation of our different scenes. So we've got those seven scenes there. And then we've also got our six different cameras. And basically, for each of those, you can just set a control for that. So at the moment, it's going to be off. But if I turn it on, then you can also set the priority. So if you're the host, maybe you want to prioritize uh, your audio. So let's say this, uh, I wanted to prioritize my video. Uh, and then all I would do is click the audio link. And I'm che uh, selecting in here, basically, which audio input I want. Uh, and it does have listed. Again, it's dropping off the bottom of the screen. But either the combo one mic input, combo two, the wireless, the video clips, and so on. So basically, I would have that set to this because this is what my microphone is. And so basically, when I speak, um, it's going to switch to my camera. And that is the high priority. Let's say camera two was the second person um, who was less important. <laughs> um, then I could turn this on and maybe they're on a wireless mic and I could select wireless too. Um, and so then it's going to prioritize me over them. But of course, if I stop talking uh, for a moment, <laughs> which I should probably do, it's been nearly an hour, uh, then it will flick back over to, uh, to their feed instead. So having audio follow video, 
I beg your pardon, having video follow audio is a really nice way to have this sort of auto switching, especially if you've got a setup, you could literally just have you and maybe a co-host, uh, you've got all the cameras rolling and you just hit the go button and then it'll do the auto switching for you. So great uh, feature there. Now let's, while we're still in Road Central, if I just come back to that, uh, let's come back out of here uh, because the other thing that we need to look at in here, well actually two things, uh, let's take the easy one first. So first of all, you've got stream profiles. This is related obviously to the live streaming component uh, and here is where you can add in uh, different platforms that you want to be able to stream to um, you can stream to twitch to youtube to in fact anywhere where you've got a stream uh, key available so rtmp key uh, so all you simply do is just click on add profile go to the profile uh, give it a name uh, maybe this is uh, another youtube channel I'll just, I can never type and I can't even type four letter words, but never mind. Um, and then you would add in the server and the stream key. So you'd get that from uh, YouTube Studio um, in the live streaming section uh, or stream section. Uh, there is a, uh, a place to get your server key and stream key, but any RTMP streaming service uh, will give you these things for you to be able to add into here. Um, and then on the device itself, uh, you can initiate the live stream from there. So the way that that works, we haven't really looked at this. We've spent a lot of time looking at Road Central and how you program it. But on the device itself, you've got these menus. First of all, let's take a little look. We've got the recording up at the top there, um, and then you've got these sort of four buttons. So these two here, relate to that crossfade uh, that I was talking about, or rather the transition. So tapping on here is gonna choose the different type of uh, transition you've got. So you can see here, we're sort of going through those different things and click on home to get back out here. You've got the duration as well. So you can change the length of that crossfade um, that you have set up. Um, down at the bottom, you've got uh, audio um, and then you've got settings in here as well. But since we are talking about streaming, uh, let's just tap on this one, this record and stream button. And so tapping on that, uh, you can see the profile that we've got selected. So because I had programmed in YouTube, but you can have a list of programs uh, that you want to stream to, uh, or you could tap on the record button up there as well. So at the moment, recording selected, uh, now streaming is selected uh, and you can see, uh, well, at the moment I don't have my storage plugged in. So a storage device needs to be plugged in to record. Um, but let's go back to streaming uh, and then there's a go live button there to, uh, to actually go live. So obviously I won't do that just at the moment. Uh, but that is how you set up streaming. Um, and you can also see at the top here, uh, we've got a little indicator light uh, to show that we have network connection uh, ready for streaming. But whilst we're in here, let's take a look then uh, at this button, which is for settings, because uh, a lot of the things that we've looked at how to do in Road Central and in the, uh, the video um, app component of Road Central, we can also do in here. So first of all, tapping on video, it shows you the different inputs you've got, HDMI A, B, uh, and so on. So these are related to those outputs, I should say. Uh, so video A, HDMI A output. Do you want to put out the multi-view or the program? This is something we can do in Road Central, but you can do here as well. Uh, we've got the same option for HDMI B. You can also change the frame rate from in here as well. Uh, and then you've also got the storage, so it'll tell you your storage that you have connected. So let's just come back out of that. Uh, then I've gone too far. <laughs> then you've got the, uh, the storage. Sorry, that's where we already were. I beg your pardon. Uh, you've got audio delay that you can set in here as well. Uh, you've got the multi-track functions that you can choose from in here as well. So that is whether you want to be just the program output or isolated video as well. Um, and then next is recording audio, recording video. Again, that multi-track selection, whether you want to record all the individual audio tracks will come onto audio next. Um, USB audio, uh, recorded video, and so on as well. So those are the options you've got in there. And then finally, you've got this button down here, which is uh, for all the audio settings. Now, as I say, you don't have all of the physical mixers, uh, physical faders, I should say, uh, that you have on the Rocaster Pro 2 or indeed on the Duo, uh, but you do have virtual faders in here. Now, it's much easier to see all of these. First of all, you will see them if you are 
inputting your output from here um, through that HDMI cable onto an external monitor uh, so that you see something that looks like this. Um, then you will see all of the failure levels uh, down at the bottom here. Uh, you will also see them though if you go into the Rode Central app. So let's just go back to there for a second, uh, going into the Road Central app and then click on this one to pop out the audio mixer. Uh, that is going to show you this. Uh, and this is obviously a lot more full fledged and you do actually have direct control from this as well. So it's not just a visual, um, whereas the uh, the HDMI output to a monitor, um, that's just going to show you this on a screen. So it gives you a visual of where everything's at, but you can't actually control things from this view. This would literally just be a, a view on a monitor. However, However, the one that you get in Road Central, um, which is uh, this one here, I should say, um, this is actually a control. So you can physically control uh, the levels of things from here as well. But you can control them just from the Rodecaster. So let's take a look at how to do it on the hardware first of all, uh, because here you can see uh, we've got this, uh, this is combo one input, which would effectively be uh, the primary mic. Um, and you can see that if I tap on the fader, uh, the fader has now turned green uh, and I can turn this up and down with this dial. And as I say, one of the things that I thought about initially when uh, I, I heard about this device some time ago uh, was would I really miss the physical faders because, uh, you know, it is a big part of the Rodecaster. But actually, as I say, I do tend to just sort of set things up and do all the uh, sort of dialing in of levels and things like that. But then actually during a, you know, a live stream or a recording, I'm not actually moving these things. So actually, uh, this is uh, quite a good solution from that point of view. Uh, so this is just the combo one input we're adjusting. We can also adjust these uh, things related to the uh, signal processing, which we'll take a look at in a moment. Uh, so you can adjust things like the uh, sparkle and punch and various other <laughs> different things. I forget what the third one's called. We'll find out in a minute in Road Central. I tend to do all the uh, sort of advanced processing for those. Uh, but anyway, coming out from here, uh, you also have the settings. So in terms of the gain, um, and also you've got this link button here. If it is linked to that uh, combo one and two input, you can have that as a stereo pair. And then you've also got the type here as well. So whether it is a dynamic mic, a condenser mic, an instrument, or just a line in, you can select that as well for this input. Uh, you can basically do that then uh, for all of these different um, devices and you can adjust either with the dial so you can see how we've got combo one combo two uh, the video clip level sound level uh, bluetooth level uh, so you can either use the rotary encoder to sort of scroll through those but this is also a touch screen so i can just touch on those uh, and make all of those adjustments the settings that you get are going to be slightly different depending on what you've got uh, so for example USB one chat, you can adjust the gain on that. And you can also, um, with that one, apply some of those effects. Whereas with some channels, you can't apply the effects. It just depends what it is. But basically, you've got up to uh, nine channels that you can assign. And um, by default, I think eight of them are pre-assigned, um, but you can just always go through and change what is assigned to that particular channel. And you can always add or remove channels. So if you go to the end of the channel list, you'll see this option, add or remove channels. And when you click on that, uh, you've literally just got a scroll wheel here, or you can use the scroll wheel, I should say, to go through a list of all of the channels and choose which ones you want to assign. Now, there's another little hidden thing here. It's not really hidden, I suppose, but I've been talking about how, uh, you know, we've got these two mic inputs. We've also got the two wireless inputs. We've also got the two USB mic inputs as well. So that's kind of, you know, six microphone inputs. But don't forget that we're also bringing in HDMI and audio can pass over HDMI as well. So it may well be that you want to have microphones on your individual cameras. And actually, this comes back to that idea of having audio following the video. Uh, I would say that the wrong way around, video following the audio, uh, you could have the camera um, with a microphone going into the camera and passing the audio through that way. So in actual fact, you could bring even more microphones into this uh, device because uh, as you just saw there, the other options that you can enable are basically HDMI 1, 2, 3, and 4. So you could potentially be bringing your microphones in through those cha channels uh, via the camera. Um, and so, uh, so yeah, you do have those options. But as I say, nine is the limit in terms of how many you can assign. So uh, at the moment, I have got nine channels assigned. So I'd have to 
unassign one to assign something else. So there is that sort of current limitation of it. Uh, one thing about this, though, I should say, and uh, this is uh, purely speculation, but the whole thing that makes this different to other video switches is the whole architecture. It doesn't use the same underlying architecture as a lot of these video switches do. It's um, a sort of custom thing that's been built with a custom CPU from the ground up uh, so that it gives it this flexibil uh, flexibility uh, and versatility. A lot of the other switches use this thing, which I've got a note about it because I could never remember it. Uh, what's it called? <laughs> it's called a, it rolls off the tongue when I can find it. Uh, in fact, I can't find it. There we go. FPGA. It's a field programmable gate array, of course. Um, those are the chips that are typically used in these sorts of switches, which are really good at what they do, um, allowing, uh, you know, for uh, processing of video and things like that. But they're not really easy to customize. And that's why it is so tricky to uh, to to customize things like the ATEM and so on uh, from a programming point of view for the end user. But one of the benefits then of this custom CPU uh, architecture that they've got is it does potentially open the way for you know future upgrades and it's just a brand new product so i shouldn't be really talking about future upgrades but uh, thinking about what's happened with the rocaster pro 2 in terms of developments have come further down the line in fact just recently there's been a beta uh, update released that has uh, a whole load of new functionality for virtual devices and so on uh, virtual uh, inputs and outputs um, then uh, it means that this potentially has that same long-term uh, uh, upgrade path or up up what's the word <laughs> it's it's uh, iteration of of the actual hardware and its uh, capabilities i'll get my words out you can tell it's been going on for quite a long time this video uh, but let's just uh, finally then talk about audio we just talked about all those inputs and outputs this is essentially a roadcaster as well uh, and well of course it's a roadcaster it's a roadcaster video but i mean it's also you know got all the power of roadcaster pro Two and Rocaster Duo packed in here as well. And what that means is for all of these different inputs, we've got all of that pro level signal processing, that audio processing, dynamic audio processing even. Uh, and so let's take a look then. If we go over to the audio mixer on the software in Road Central, uh, once again, we've got this visualization here of all of our different uh, virtual channels, all nine channels there. You can see what is assigned to each one. Uh, if I want to move these around, I can simply drag and drop to, uh, to move those around. That's going to change the order that they appear, obviously, in the mixer. Um, and it's going to change the order that we with which they appear in the um, output as well. So if we have a look at our uh, multi-view output, you can see I'm just going to drag something around in Road Central and it's reordered them and just down here as well. So if I just drag things around, move them around in Road Central, it's going to update the output. So that's just for from the point of view of being able to organize things as you want to see them in there. But just coming back over then to Road Central, uh, we have got then the ability to come in here and uh, also then change uh, the different inputs. So here we've got pod mic, uh, we've got line in, instrument, dynamic, condenser. So all of these are going to look familiar to anybody who's used Rodecaster because these are all the same different settings that we've got, the different presets that we've got for different types of microphones that you may want. Uh, loads of the, uh, obviously the the Rode microphones, but also a couple of common ones, the RE20 and the SM7B, uh, two very popular podcast and broadcast uh, mics that are used as well. So that's just going to give you those uh, sort of advanced, those initial settings, I should say, um, for the microphone. These were the three things that I was talking about. So depth, sparkle, and punch. Uh, those are basically just going to ad adjust the uh, the profile of the microphone to uh, to adjust the sort of the, the richness, the sound, <laughs> the at the low end, at the high end, and everywhere in between as well. And basically, what's happening is when you adjust these things, um, then it's actually adjusting a whole load of things uh, going on in the background. Uh, and in fact, you can also adjust those as well. So in here, if we go into the advanced mode here, uh, whoops, let me just do this. Have I selected the right one? Yeah, there we go. Um, you've then got all of these different things here, uh, such as the high pass filter, the de the noise gate compressor, um, the equalizer, the exciter and uh, panning as well. Now, these are really advanced level um, audio processing that you can do to help with a whole range of things. So, for example, if I activate the high pass filter and by the way, my audio isn't currently going through this. I'm just uh, showing you the uh, the functionality, though, um, the high pass filter basically uh, knocks out 
some of the lower tones. So if you've got uh, maybe the rumble of traffic noise or uh, equipment or things like that, um, then this would allow you to sort of isolate that or remove it from uh, your audio. Uh, the de is to remove those S sounds in your, uh, in your voice. And so you can uh, knock those out using this. Uh, these are uh, uh, quite a lot of technical terms here so if it's completely new to you uh, then it can be a bit uh, baffling but don't worry about that I've got something that can help you with that just coming up uh, in a few moments uh, then you've got the noise gate uh, that is basically when you um, uh, stop speaking or noise isn't uh, you, there's a below a certain level of volume is going into the microphone, um, then you can have it so that basically it cuts off the audio or reduces it, uh, basically closes the gate until, until it senses that there is audio coming through again. Um, and again, a number of technical terms in here in terms of setting that up. Uh, compressor is basically to sort of level out uh, the difference between the low volume and the high volume in your voice. Um, and so that's going to mean that if you have got a broad range, uh, maybe sometimes you're speaking quietly, sometimes you're speaking loudly, it's actually going to flatten that down so that um, there isn't the same sort of audible difference uh, between those high and low points. So that's essentially what the compressor is doing. So when you're over a certain volume, it's going to reduce the volume down, um, whilst when you are under a certain volume, or indeed overall, it can just raise up the volume uh, to um, raise up those uh, uh, you know, when you are speaking more quietly, perhaps. Uh, next is the three band EQ. So this is the equalizer to raise or lower um, those different uh, frequencies, high and low tones and so on. And then you've got the exciter, which consists of the best name of any uh, audio processor, the Big Bottom or the Aural Exciter. Uh, so the Big Bottom is adjusting the sort of lower frequencies and the Aural Exciter is adding uh, more sort of clarity, I suppose, to the higher frequencies and adjusting uh, something that's going on there um, and then we've also got the panning which is the left and right now the reason why I'm kind of just rattling through all of those advanced audio settings I mean it is a huge part of the Rodecaster video uh, don't get me wrong but actually the advanced audio processing is a whole video in its own right and in fact I've already made that video so rather than just drag this out into a two-hour video <laughs> to go through all those settings uh, if you want to really get an understanding of them then I'll link to that uh, video shortly um, so with that said, what we've got in the Roadcaster video is truly, I think, going to be something that is going to change the game in terms of hardware camera switches. It takes all of the advanced audio processing that we're used to in this, my baby, <laughs> the Roadcaster Pro 2. Um, this is probably my favorite bit of tech in the studio, um, aside from the Stream Deck. So Stream Deck and Roadcaster um, are the uh, the two things there. Um, now we've got all of that functionality in this, which with its delightfully smaller form factor, but yet also crumbs in a full six camera video switcher and a seven scene builder, and also just the ease with which we can do it. As I say, I did all the research on uh, camera switches uh, back when I was looking to start the channel and the ATEM was obviously the top of the pack at the time. Um, I don't think it's going to be there for too much longer, certainly amongst the uh, consumers like uh, like me. Certainly, um, I understand that there is certain level of broadcast uh, um, heritage that is bought with the ATEM, but actually that's not always a good thing when actually what you want is you just want to be able to create your scenes and get to uh, get to making them and get to using them. And that is really what this gives us for a hardware switcher to be able to quickly build out scenes as we can do in the uh, Rode Central video component is just for me a complete game changer. But like I say, let's not uh, forget all of the audio processing. And if you want to learn more about all of that audio processing, then check out this video here because there I go through all of the details all about the advanced audio processing so compressor noise gate and things like that why they matter how you can use them and how to really dial in all of those advanced features there'll be lots more roadcaster videos to come on this channel so if you haven't already of course don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll see you again soon